This right here is an absolute behemoth of a GPU. This is the Palette 4080 and as a comparison, as you can see, it is bigger than my head. The design of this GPU right here actually impresses me quite a lot. I never owned a pallet designed uh, product before and I was a bit skeptical before pulling the trigger on this RTX 4080 but definitely the design looks and feels quite premium as it should for the amount of money that they're asking for a GPU like this. The heatsink it's oh my god so big thick and bulky and I rather think that it's going to do a stellar job of keeping this GPU cool alongside with of course these three huge fans on the front of the GPU. First of all for the amount of money that you're spending on this GPU yes you do get addressable RGB with this GPU right here. These plastic crystals all around the, the front here actually do light up and they are controllable through software and of course you get a cable in the kit so you can connect the GPU to your PC. Not only that, of course you get a addressable RGB light for the GeForce logo right here and uh, also the uh, well Game Rock logo right here that you have on the front of this GPU. Uh, not only that, it actually looks stunning. Um, it comes included with these two brushed uh, fins, uh, uh, aluminum fins on the front here, which actually look and feel quite premium. And the design of the brushed aluminum also goes all the way across to, to the back of the GPU, where on the back of it, of course, you have anodized polished aluminum, which actually looks and feels quite premium. And as well, you get some, uh, well, pass-through design for uh, that huge heatsink to actually dissipate some heat through the GPU. Connectivity wise, of course, you are getting your uh, three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port right here on the back of it, like with most uh, GPUs of these generations nowadays. And of course, you are getting the 12 pin connector as well, which is included with this GPU. And as I uh, after mentioned, the uh, addressable RGB cable and the connector right here on the GPU side. This 16 gigs monster right here takes in about 380 watts of power, or at least that is its rated TDP. Any manufacturers actually recommend a 700 watts power supply to go with it. Of course, in the kit, you also get your three 8 pin connector in that go out to a 12 pin connector so this is the new standard and layout for nvidia 40 series moving forward definitely my cat approves this gpu so design wise guys this is the gpu right here it is quite big and heavy and bulky you don't actually get an nvme link for what it's worth nowadays but you do actually get a very little tiny and concealed bio switch right here if you're, you're into that sort of thing and now that this has been covered what I'm actually planning to do is actually give it a whirl, see exactly how it runs with its stock configuration and afterwards we can go over some OC settings with this GPU and see exactly what sort of performance we can still squeeze out of it and compare it to its, uh, well, to its stock configuration. Let's jump right in and do it. So this is Dying Light 2 running at 4K using the RTX 4080 and as you can see it is right there in this open case and I can barely hear it running. There is some minimal coil wind coming from it but nothing really major. And uh, this is definitely something that I can live with and especially if I'm gonna put this PC underneath the desk and close it off uh, with its uh, well glass panel then definitely I will not be able to hear this RTX 4080 running. So I'm gonna take actually the mic and put it right up to the GPU itself so you can hear the coil whine a little bit better but there is nothing astronomical. Definitely it is uh, unnoticeable once you get to, to put it in the PC and put the PC maybe underneath the desk or just close it off together because uh, yeah the noise is just barely audible take a listen that's basically it everything is running uh, buttery smooth right here as you would expect i'm already playing for about 20 25 minutes the temperatures are well in check here with sitting what at 60 degrees ish so that's perfectly fine and yeah uh, it's running stellar it is using quite a bit of power there as you can see around 320 watts running at its uh, standard configuration and it's giving us anywhere in between 60 to uh, well 75 occasionally fps all right so make it or break it time cyberpunk 2077 running 4k with this rtx 4080 right here Everything is running smooth and as you can see we're still uh, bumping up the um, voltage there to about what 320 or so watts and it is actually giving us uh, 
60 FPS, <laughs> very close to 60, stable 60, that's 59 to 60 FPS. The game is running absolutely stellar. Everything is set on max here and ultra and psycho wherever applicable and the game is running fairly nice. As you can see, we're using a, a little bit less uh, VRAM uh, than uh, with Dying Light 2, or just about uh, eight gigabytes of video memory uh, used right there, but everything is running smoothly. I think the textures are still loading up as the VRAM is uh, kind of loading up there slowly, but uh, everything, it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's running smooth, it's running fine, as you would expect from an RTX 4080, no doubt. But I'm guessing now it's the time to actually push this GPU a little bit and see exactly how much more we can get out of it. All right, let's apply this 200 and let's run Dying Light once again and see exactly what performance uplift we can get. So this is the OC that's applied to the GPU. We're only, uh, well, we only done 200 megahertz or so on the GPU side. Everything seems to be running quite smooth. Uh, what intrigues me, it's actually that we're using the same amount of wattage there. So the same amount of watts, 320, that's uh, where we were at just before. I and I, I don't really feel the game playing any smoother than it was uh, doing previously. Uh, it's maybe doing a bit better, I don't know, around 70 to maybe 80 FPS as I can see there. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't really tell the difference with the naked eye. So everything seems to be running buttery smooth that you would expect. But still, hey, 200 megahertz on the GPU side, it's uh, 200 megahertz, right? So if you can get it, why not? Uh, at barely or any cost at all because as you can see we're still drawing up the same amount of power as we did before so yeah this stands as a testimony of the performance of the four nanometer gpu uh silicon or die in there so yeah definitely if you're planning to buy a 40 series this is something that you can do for free you can absolutely go ahead and oc your gpu for a little bit of extra performance that would be otherwise wasted if you are that type of person that's looking to get everything out of their hardware. Okay, back to Cyberpunk 2077 with the 200 or I should say aforementioned 200 uh, megahertz OC on the GPU side. And as you can see the performance, it's more or less the same or more or less the same story as in Dying Light 2. Uh, still 320 watts of power, still the same GPU temperatures and basically we're at the more or less the same uh, FPS in game. Uh, yeah, just shy of 60 there, so that's where we were sitting before. Nothing really happening or nothing really much happening with just uh, OCing the GPU side. So uh, yeah, with this in mind, we did increase the uh, overall megahertz there. And as you can see, we're sitting at around, what, just uh, over 2900 megahertz on the GPU side, uh, on the GPU clocks, I should say. So yeah, the OC is definitely in effect as uh, we are playing this title. So if you guys are wondering if this RTX 4080, it's worth it. Uh, <laughs> my honest opinion is that actually you can get a car that it's uh, gonna fare probably more or less the same as this one at a reduced price. And that is the RTX 3090. I absolutely got the same results with the RTX 3090 as I did with the RTX 4080 right here. It's just that that card used about 100 watts or so more of power, giving us the same performance as this guy right here. So I guess the answer basically lies with you guys. Uh, do you want to future-proof yourself as much as possible and go with the latest and greatest or maybe choose to go back a generation like the 3090 and do keep in mind that both the 3090, 4080, 4070 and of course the 4090 both share the same VRAM which is the GDDR6X. Uh, you do get more with the 3090, of course you get 24 gigs of GDDR6X memory so you are, if you are using like applications that are very uh, intensive for the VRAM uh, definitely go with that card. Otherwise, you're gonna have to fork out a lot more if you are going to aim for the 4090. But all in all, I do like this card, this 4080 right here. And if the price is right for you, definitely go and pull the trigger on it. I'm really happy. I do like that it doesn't really have that much coil wind to it. Uh, it allows for some OC. I couldn't get it past the 200 uh, megahertz on the GPU clocks because otherwise uh, it would be unstable and basically either crash the games or basically crash the entire system uh, as a whole. But other than this, I do say that this is a very robust, very refined product. Of course, it feels uh, and it screams out quality and it should for the amount of money that you are going to have to fork out for it. Guys, thank you very much for choosing to watch today's video. Stay awesome. Maybe consider subscribing and see you guys in the next one.